A suspect is under arrest for a kidnapping in Philadelphia that was captured by surveillance cameras. CCTVs have become an indispensable tool in modern crime solving, serving as silent witnesses to capture crucial details that might otherwise go unnoticed. Often operating inconspicuously, these unassuming cameras have played a significant role in exposing crimes, shedding light on accidents, and revealing the unexpected actions of people who often have no idea they're being recorded. From thefts and abductions to road rage, join us as we explore 15 real crimes captured on security cameras. Number 15. Botched Kidnapping Attempt On October 11th, 2021, a disturbing incident unfolded near a gas station in the Bronx. A woman was walking with her three grandchildren when a man wearing a blanket partially covering himself approached them. Out of nowhere, the man snatched one of the toddlers and quickly fled the scene. The grandmother faced a heartbreaking decision as she was torn between the captured child and the two boys still with her. However, her love and courage prevailed, and she chased after the abductor. Strangers nearby joined in to help, and together they cornered the man, later identified as Santiago Salcedo. He released the child and attempted to escape on a scooter, but the police eventually caught up with him. Salcedo, reported as homeless, was apprehended and arrested. The terrifying event had been captured on surveillance video, showcasing the shocking attempt to kidnap the three-year-old girl. Onlookers were horrified as they witnessed the man swiftly pick up the child, wrap her in a blanket, and flee. Quick-thinking individuals stepped in, preventing the suspect from getting far. He let go of the child and returned to his scooter, which he had left across the street, as witnesses dialed the police. Santiago Salcedo faced serious charges for his actions. He was arrested and charged with attempted kidnapping, kidnapping, unlawful imprisonment, and endangering the welfare of a child. As he was escorted from the 45th precinct in the Bronx, Salcedo's unsettling smile contrasted with the gravity of the situation. Thanks to the swift response and courage of those present, a potential tragedy was averted, underscoring the importance of community vigilance and rapid intervention in the face of danger. Number 14. Abduction Something very scary happened in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in November 2014. A young woman named Carlisha Freeland Gaither, who worked as a nursing assistant and was 22 years old, was walking home at night when a man suddenly grabbed her and forced her into a parked car. The whole thing was caught on a nearby camera, and it all happened in less than a minute. People who saw the video were shocked and upset. The video showed Carlisha walking on a street in Germantown at around 9 o'clock at night. Then, a man approached her, grabbed her, and put her into a parked car. She tried to fight back and screamed for help. She dropped her phone and broke a window while struggling. The man, who wore dark clothes and a hooded jacket, drove the car away with Carlatia inside. The police in Philadelphia quickly showed the video to everyone, hoping someone would know where Carlatia was. They offered a reward of $10,000 for any information. The video was shared on social media and in the news, and many people felt sorry for Carlatia. People who saw the video recognized the car as a Ford Taurus, which helped the police find it. The police carefully looked at the video to find clues. They saw that the man walked limply and had trouble walking normally. This helped them guess who he might be. Because the news was everywhere, they found and caught the man who had abducted her after a few days. She was safe, and the person who took her, Delvin Barnes, was arrested and charged with kidnapping. Carlisha's dad said he was proud of her because she was able to make friends with the person who took her to keep herself safe. Even though she went through something really bad, she's doing okay now. This story showed how sharing information and working together can help solve problems quickly. Number 13. Road Rage A terrifying road rage incident that escalated into a shooting drew public attention due to a dash cam video capturing the encounter. The incident unfolded on June 21, 2021 in Florida. The video on Eric Michael Popper's vehicle dash cam showed events that led to charges against both drivers involved. The dispute was ignited by Popper. While driving on Interstate 95 in Miami, he recklessly changed lanes, cutting off another driver named Rene Suarez. 
Suarez responded by honking his horn and showing his displeasure. The situation quickly escalated as Suarez began tailgating Popper and making gestures out of his window. The tension climaxed when Suarez allegedly threw an object toward Popper's vehicle. In response to this perceived threat, Popper pulled his handgun from a holster beneath his seat. Claiming that he feared for his safety, he fired 11 shots toward Suarez's car as the vehicles were side by side. Fortunately, no one was injured in the shooting. Both drivers contacted the authorities to report the incident. Popper was subsequently arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. His court date was scheduled for April 28th. Suarez also faced legal consequences. He was charged with criminal mischief for damaging Popper's vehicle. His trial hearing was also set for February 28th. The case serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of road rage and the potential consequences of escalating conflicts on the road. The dashcam footage has raised discussions about the importance of maintaining composure while driving and finding safer ways to address disputes on the road. Number 12. Azam Mangori on September 21, 2020, something really sad happened. A lady named Lorraine was walking back home after hanging out with her friends. She had been drinking, and then a man named Azam Mangori, who was 24 years old, approached her. A recording from a camera showed Mangori following Lorraine for a long time before finally engaging in conversation with her. Somehow, he convinced her to go to his apartment. Sadly, this marked the last time anyone saw Lorraine Cox alive. Over the next two days, Lorraine's friends grew worried. She behaved differently on Facebook and claimed she had moved to another city called Plymouth. Finally, on September 23, 2020, they reported Lorraine missing, and the search for her began. The police discovered a video of Lorraine with the man which helped them locate him. When they arrested Mangori on September 8, 2020, he lied about his name and claimed to be homeless. Later, he revealed that he was from Iraq and had run away from home due to his strict parents. He claimed he would be in trouble because he was not like the other people there. However, the police uncovered his deception. He had recorded a private moment with Lorraine, contradicting his statements about himself. He admitted to being attracted to both boys and girls. The police also discovered he had been in contact with male and female escorts before Lorraine's death. After arresting Mangori, the police found parts of Lorraine's body behind his apartment and in a forested area called Tin Pit Hill. Her body was dismembered. Due to the decomposition of her body, it was difficult for the doctors to determine the exact cause of her death. However, something might have obstructed her breathing like a t-shirt. There were two stories about what transpired when Lorraine died. The police believed that Mangori planned to harm her. They discovered videos of him engaging in peculiar activities after Lorraine's death, including searching online for how to dig a grave. Conversely, Mangori claims that Lorraine's death was an accident. He asserts that they had a good time together and engaged in certain activities. He alleges that Lorraine used an illicit substance, but doctors said she had no drugs. Mangori changed his story multiple times. Mangori was arrested and faced multiple charges. He has been in jail for 20 years for his actions against Lorraine Cox. It is truly saddening because Lorraine's death could have been prevented. Number 11. El Paso Zoo A woman entered a zoo exhibit in El Paso, Texas in May last year, committing one of the silliest crimes ever captured on camera. A brief video that surfaced online showed a young woman relaxing next to the open-air exhibit's waterfall while wearing a tank top and shorts. She had to scale a fence, navigate shrubs, and cross a four-foot moat to get there. Libby and Sunday, two of the monkeys, approached the intruder, who gave them something. She throws what she has in her hand behind her if neither monkey takes it. The intrusion returned through the moat after her enjoyment and was assisted out of the enclosure. The act provoked outrage online, as was expected. El Paso Zoo wasn't aware of the occurrence until the footage was made public because there weren't any surveillance cameras there. As soon as the zoo was contacted, friends of the woman in the video identified her as 26-year-old Lucy Ray. Ray was immediately fired from the law office where she had worked as a paralegal as a result of her actions. Also, she was taken into custody by the local police because the zoo planned to prosecute her for trespassing. 
Libby and Sunday were reportedly unharmed by the incident, which is good news. Because they were more preoccupied with the visitor in their enclosure, scientists are unsure if the monkeys consumed the forbidden treat. The incident may have undone years of training because the monkeys are not used to human touch, according to zoo staff. Additionally, they feared Ray might have exposed the animals to COVID-19, but fortunately that didn't happen. Number 10. Company Rivalry By the time Faraz Sulman and his friends realized their crime had been recorded on Sulman's own CCTV cameras, an effort to assassinate a rival company owner had already gone horribly wrong. During an innocent stroll down the street to get groceries, a 19-year-old student was struck by a bullet meant for Sulman's adversary. She tragically passed away, and the entire event was documented on camera. The story began in the year 2019, when the proprietor of a store called Quick Shine decided to sell tires in addition to vehicle washes. Quick Shine was located adjacent to Suleiman's own establishment, Rhode Island Tires, a tire shop. The new rivalry didn't sit well with Suleiman. The competition occasionally escalated into violence, leading to the setting of a fire outside of R.I. Tires and the calling of the police after the owner of Quick Shine refused to allow workers erecting a R.I. Tires sign access to his yard. Suleiman made the decision to permanently discontinue the competition on May 20th. For 1,500 pounds, he and a companion hired a hitman. The proprietor of Quickshine was to be assassinated in front of his own business so that Suleiman could witness the atrocity firsthand. The law student's parents had also sent her out to pick up groceries for when they broke their fast later that day. The two tire businesses were on her route. The assassin opened fire twice as she passed. The Quickshine store's window was struck by one bullet and the girl was shot in the shoulder by the other, which ended her life. Suleiman and his accomplices didn't realize, for whatever reason, that the entire incident would be recorded by R.I. Tires' CCTV. The video was immediately requested by the police, who were investigating the crime. They were joined by one of the accomplices while they watched the video. Eight people, including the hitman Suleiman and those who assisted in the plot, were charged with crimes in connection with the death of the young girl and the attempt on the Quickshine owner's life. Number 9. Business Under Attack A horse betting establishment enjoyed tranquility at half past two in the afternoon in Glanmire, Ireland. Tim Murphy stood behind the counter engrossed in his work. Two gamblers, one of them an 85-year-old named Dennis O'Connor, attentively followed horse races. In an abrupt turn of events, the atmosphere shifted drastically. Three armed individuals forcefully entered, demanding money. Two brandished hammers, while the third aimed a shotgun at Dennis O'Connor. The person holding the shotgun momentarily diverted attention to the other customer sprawled on the floor. Seizing this opportunity, O'Connor took action. Instead of fleeing, he resolved to aid the beleaguered worker menaced by the hammers. O'Connor's familiarity with such situations perhaps guided his actions, as he knew exactly what to do. Confronting the young individual armed with the shotgun, he displayed his determination to impart a lesson in proper behavior. However, the shotgun wielder hastily fled the scene, prompting O'Connor to cast aside a chair, signaling his intention to confront the troublemaker. Nonetheless, he re-entered the establishment to assist the worker. O'Connor promptly readied himself, ensuring he would evade the swinging hammer. Transitioning from self-defense to counteraction, he unleashed a forceful kick that expelled the criminals from the premises. Dennis O'Connor's display of courage shines in this narrative. His swift response ensured the safety of all present. Through his courage and astute decisions, he thwarted any potential harm. He exemplified how ordinary individuals can achieve remarkable feats in challenging circumstances. Number 8. Angry Silva Chucky's convenience store in Dona Ana, New Mexico, is where an unusual and troubling incident unfolded involving a 43-year-old man named Ali Gracia Silva. On a specific day, Silva's emotions got the best of him. He entered the store in a state of anger, and his actions caused quite a scene. His behavior captured the attention of everyone present as he began hurling objects at the cashier, resulting in chaos. Remarkably, the cashier managed to slip away from the turmoil. Strangely, 
This wasn't the first instance of such behavior from Silva. He had a similar outburst at a Walmart two years earlier. Silva's behavior took a more troublesome turn as his anger surged. He noticed a black SUV while venturing outside to the area with the gas pumps. Consumed by rage, he forcefully opened the SUV's door, only to find the driver calmly refueling the gas tank. Rather than calming down, Silva assaulted the driver. Fortunately, bystanders intervened, chasing Silva away and preventing further harm. The aftermath of Silva's actions left a significant impact. The store's owners estimated the damage he caused at around $20,000. The police promptly arrived at the scene and took Silva into custody. He faced several charges, including property damage and physical assault. Number 7. Grand Theft Auto When someone commits a robbery before leading the police on a significant chase, they've held up a bank, a jewelry store, or something along those lines. However, this individual decided to target a GameStop before hopping into his Camaro and evading the law in Houston. But this criminal's odd and arguably incompetent behavior didn't stop there. When a news crew in a helicopter first spotted the Chevy Camaro, the driver was aggressively navigating through fairly dense traffic. He certainly didn't choose the best time of day to attempt an escape on the highway. Eventually, he became completely stuck in traffic after driving on the shoulder. The driver probably realized that being outside a travel lane was incredibly conspicuous. While white Camaros aren't extremely common, they aren't as rare as Lamborghinis or Ferraris, so theoretically he could blend in with traffic. However, there was one major problem. Helicopters. A news crew was in the air and the police were also airborne. As we've seen repeatedly, it's incredibly difficult to evade law enforcement once they have a visual on you from above. Many of these helicopters even have infrared cameras on board, so even at night, escape is nearly impossible. Perhaps the most unbelievable aspect of this entire incident is how it concluded. The individual exited the highway, pulled up behind some cars and semi-trucks at a traffic light, and then many police cars arrived. He remained seated in his Chevy for a while before finally surrendering. We can assume he eventually realized they had known his whereabouts. Number 6. Police Abductor On the evening of March 3, 2023, a chain of events led to a devastating loss that shook a nation. Sarah Everard, a 33-year-old marketing executive, disappeared after leaving a friend's house in London. She was last seen alive on CCTV cameras crossing Clapham Common. Wayne Cousins, a Metropolitan Police officer, used his authority to abduct her, later taking her life. Cousins' rented car was caught on bus cameras approaching Sarah. Pretending to enforce COVID lockdown rules, he detained her with a fake warrant card, then handcuffed and abducted her. He drove to Kent, where he ended her life on March 4th. He later raped and strangled her, concealing her remains in woodland he owned. Cousins' attempts to mislead authorities failed, and he was arrested on March 19. He pleaded guilty to rape and murder in June and was sentenced to life in prison. The case revealed failures in police procedures, leading to calls for reform and accountability. Metropolitan Police Commissioner Cressida Dick resigned in the wake of the case, and discussions about safety and gender-based violence were ignited. Sarah Everard's tragic story serves as a reminder of the need for justice, accountability, and societal change to create safer communities and address systemic issues. Now, it's time for today's subscriber's pick. Today, we're engaging in a crucial discussion affecting all students. This topic concerns a grave issue in certain educational environments where teachers take advantage of their students for benefits. We understand the sensitivity of this subject, but it's crucial to illuminate it and equip you with knowledge. As per research published by The Guardian, over one in three girls, an estimated 37% in co-ed schools are reported to experience this mishap during their time in school, with 24% facing unwelcome physical advances. Students, of course, become uncomfortable when a teacher crosses ethical boundaries. This is not only distressing, but also entirely unacceptable. Education should always revolve around learning and personal development without unjust compromises. 
What should a student do if they find themselves in a situation involving inappropriate advances from a teacher? Ponder it and share your thoughts in the comments section below. Number 5. Elizabeth Cook On August Fouth, 2021, a guy going by the alias Jeff returned to his parked car late at night to find a woman he did not know trying to start it. As he confronted the woman and began her recording on his phone, she claimed that her friend had told her that she could borrow their car and that she had confused Jeff's car for theirs. When Jeff questioned her, pointing out that she was attempting to break his steering column, she fled the scene, but the woman had left her belongings in the car and wanted to retrieve them. Jeff kept filming as he once again refused the woman entrance to his car and advised her to phone the police if she needed her things. Jeff was left with the woman's belongings after she fled. Since it was obvious that this was not the woman's first theft, a number of other offenses were soon discovered. Jeff was able to access her phone, and he found out that her name was Elizabeth Cook. He shared the footage of Cook attempting to break into his car on her social media accounts, and the copied her phone's contents. His initial goals were to hold Cook accountable for her actions and to assist victims in recovering their stolen goods. The first things that were given back to their proper owners were the IDs and credit cards that had been left in his car. But as Jeff looked through the phone's contents further, he discovered something much darker. Cook had filmed a video on January 1st, 21, about a man she claimed to have met a few days before named Bobby Phillips. Recently, Bobby had been released from jail. Cook said it was for murder, but local newspapers could only locate records of less serious offenses like burglary and traffic offenses. The video was recorded the day Bobby passed away. Ever since Bobby was released from prison, they have lived in the same home. Emergency services were called to the location on New Year's Day, when they discovered Bobby with a weak pulse. Cook instructed them to cease after attempting to save his life. She claimed that he had granted her power of attorney, and that he would not want to be revived. He had a cardiac disease, which the coroner said was caused by the use of illicit substances, and the incident was ruled an accident. In the days preceding Bobby's death, Jeff found images of documents that had been uploaded to the cloud. These documents contained Bobby's social security number and a will that designated Cook as the only beneficiary. A few days before, the will had been modified. Cook was taken into custody on suspicion of burglary and drug-related offenses. Police are currently looking into whether she was involved in Bobby Phillips' demise, or if the most recent alteration to his will was really a coincidence. Number 4. Stabbed because of bad manners. On September 20th, around 11.30 at night, something happened in Gowanus, Brooklyn. A woman named Joan Nunez, aged 37, opened the door of a shop for a man named Edwin Pedroza, aged 42. But when Pedroza walked in without saying thank you, Nunez talked to him about it. This made them start arguing with each other, as the police say. There's a video from the police that seems to show Nunez, who's wearing white, and Pedroza fighting in the shop. At one point, it looks like Pedroza pushes Nunez against a wall while he holds his hands up. As the fight got worse, the two men left the shop. Outside, things got more heated. Pedroza is said to have taken a knife and used it to stab Nunez in his stomach and neck. Then he quickly left on a special kind of bike called an e-bike. Nunez was taken to a nearby hospital, but the doctors couldn't save him. The police say he died. The next day, the police arrested Pedroza in Brooklyn. They charged him with manslaughter and having an illegal weapon. Number 3. Fearless Cashier When faced with such situations, a cashier's wisest action is to exit the store promptly. However, a recent incident captured on video at a Jimmy John's establishment showcased a distinct and unconventional response from one of its cashiers, Tucker Murray, when confronted with imminent danger. Despite a firearm pointed directly at him, Tucker Murray exhibited an exceptional approach characterized by fearlessness and quick thinking. His remarkable courage was evident as he calmly maintained his composure with a gun mere inch from his head. Tucker Murray efficiently emptied the cash register's contents per the robber's demands, displaying remarkable compliance and poise. Astonishingly, he extended his cooperation even further by offering the entirety of the cash drawer to the assailant all while maintaining an unfazed and indifferent demeanor. 
This exceptional response to a life-threatening situation defied conventional expectations, earning Tucker Murray recognition as a symbolic figure of fortitude within the fast food industry. The incident gained widespread attention after the video footage circulated, prompting Kansas City law enforcement to take decisive action. Utilizing the video as critical evidence, the police successfully identified the suspect and promptly apprehended him. The episode highlighted Tucker Murray's exceptional courage and underscored the value of video documentation in aiding criminal investigations. Tucker Murray's handling of the difficult situation at Jimmy John's is a powerful reminder that individuals confronted with adversity can respond in ways that transcend traditional assumptions. Number 2. Raging Passenger Over the weekend, a disturbing incident involving a man from Surrey took place on a BC transit bus in Abbotsford, British Columbia. The situation escalated from a verbal disagreement with passengers to a violent altercation, resulting in assault charges. Video footage captured the man engaging in an aggressive verbal exchange and making threatening remarks. The incident occurred on a bus, leading to a halt on Highway 1 westbound at Whatcom Road. The man physically attacked multiple passengers, but other brave passengers intervened and restrained him until the police arrived. Four people sustained minor injuries in the assault. The assailant, identified as David Allen Lucas, is facing charges of assault with a weapon and multiple counts of assault. Number 1. Bag-Masked Thief With so many cameras around today, especially in locations like hotel hallways, it makes sense for a criminal going to commit a crime to try to conceal their identity. Some people try to hide from cameras by wearing elaborate disguises. When Christopher Badman carried out his crime in September 2022, he decided to make use of a bag for carrying things. The Marine Hotel was packed with visitors who were in the South Wales town for the annual Elvis Festival, and Badman thought they would be ideal targets for robbery. He arrived at the motel of about 3 a.m., with an empty bag covering his head. The sack was effective at hiding his face from security cameras, but it was also difficult for him to see through, and cameras instead showed him stumbling down halls before breaking into rooms. When Badman broke into one of the rooms, the visitor inside woke up while Badman was attempting to grab the guest's laptop. Badman evidently removed the bag once out of sight of cameras to try to be more discreet, but when the victim awoke, Badman rushed out of the room without putting the disguise. Outside, cameras captured a clear sight of Badman's face as he chose not to break into another room and exited the area. As he walked out of the hotel, he tried to pull his hood up again to hide his face, but it was too late. After the robbery, officers analyzed the CCTV tape and identified Badman. He was apprehended and sentenced to 16 months in prison afterwards. These footages have shown us how things can go wrong in our world. It's important to watch out for each other and speak up. If you see something, say something. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.